Let's go through some advanced classification steps. First, document definitions need to be created, and in this demo, they already have been. So we can click on Project, Document Definition, and we see uh, four listed right there. <clears throat> document sections within these document definitions provide names for the automatically created classes. So in this particular project, having four document definitions, no matter how many you have, it's still a necessity that the document sections be named uniquely. So that will allow classes to be properly uh, distinguished. Within classification training batches, we will create a new batch and select an image profile. We can do that by right clicking and changing the classification profile. We'll select image and text fast. Similarly, we can right click here and select our precision priority ratio. So we will now select high precision. Next, we want to load images into the batch. So I'll go ahead and open up the batch and I see an interface, uh, an icon here, load images from folder, which is what I want to do because I've pre-arranged um, my documents. I placed them in subfolders of a parent folder and the subfolders um, have the actual class names. And so in a subfolder, say with the class name WinWill, are all the WinWill documents. So I'll go ahead and click here and navigate out to where I want to capture data from. So I'll just paste the folder here. And the images are being added. So while they're being added, we can take a look at this foldering structure. It's important that each folder contains just the images that they should. So in the price folder, we should have nothing but price images or price list images. And we'll let these images get added to the system. And we've unchecked recognize added images automatically, which actually speeds up our process here. We'll select all the images and set class based on subfolder name. This is a real time saver because it prevents us from having to manually go through and possibly make mistakes as we attribute a reference class to each of these images in this batch. So we see contract, passport, and price images here. Now we need to connect the created classes with document sections. So I can open up the class mapping dialog and I can then <clears throat> select contract, passport, and price and click auto connect. And it found the document name and document section, document definition name and section that corresponds. For the left class, I'll select choose and this happens to be a variant of the uh, QA report document definition. Uh, it happens to be a variant that doesn't exist yet. So I'm going to add a record left and I'll click on OK. Then I'll select that variant, click select, and I'll click OK. And that's been mapped. The same thing I, uh, can be done for PCF. So once again, QA report, variant select. I don't want left, I want PCF. So I'll add the record PCF. 
I'll click OK. And now for Winwill, we'll follow the same procedure. We'll click Add Record, type in Winwill. Select Winwill and click OK. Note that you can use this panel on the side for quickly assigning classes. Let's do benchmark. Uh, benchmarking can um, split your documents into documents marked for training and some marked, marked for testing. So usually we do 60% uh, for training and 40% for testing. You can make adjustments if you need to, um, but when we click OK, that's going to go ahead and run a benchmark test. It's essentially going to perform classification. So we'll let it go. You can see some of these documents are now marked for testing and some for training. And while this is running, I'll just mention that one training batch, one classification training batch, is equivalent to one classification model or classifier. And we can create several classifiers inside of one project and specify the appropriate project at the project or batch type level. So we can see some statistics available in a log, but here we see the confusion matrix. The confusion matrix is formed according to the results for the documents that had the status for testing. We can see the um, statistics ac according to pages or percent, and we can also view statistics by class and uh, we can look at confusing classes, those classes that have the most problems. And we can see a markup problem here by double-clicking. We can double-click on this image and we can see that this passport got um, recognized as a contract. So this is definitely an error and um, you can see that the reference class is different than the result class and you can see it graphically in the confusion matrix which is very helpful. I can actually right click on my misclassified image and select show similar pages and while it's searching for similar pages. Um, what we have here is really a markup error and um, maybe it's easy to correct this kind of an error if you've just got five to ten classes but if you've got more than that um, this is new functionality that will help you uh, make corrections uh, to markup errors here. So I can select passport and um, also show similar pages for reference classes which will show images with the same reference class and I can also show similar pages for result class so if I right click and we can see those images so we can correct the classification um, er the reference class error right here by selecting the proper reference class and then we'll retrain our classifier batch. And we can see that our results have improved.
Now we'll load our classifier. And once we load our classifier, we can go out and create a new working batch, load up images, let me get to the correct folder here. and we can recognize all these images for testing. And now we can uh, look through these images and look at what our results are and do further tuning.